don't fuck with me, mate. Why not? Who are you? What have you got to hide? You don't so what, you might wonder, was all that about? Well, I'd gone along to check out the Rally for Life, uh, called by the Love Both organisation, which is kind of the modern version of Spook. Um, and the turnout for that had obviously been pretty disappointing for them. There were maybe 1,500 people at most there, although later on they claimed this crowd was tens of thousands, if you can believe that. And then I'd gone up to have a look at the uh, small counter demonstration that had been called by Radical Queers Resist. So this is it on the other side of the road. The counter demonstration was intended to be silent. They didn't want to engage with people at the rally uh, precisely because they didn't want the sort of aggro we've just seen. <laughs> If you're going to put up a sign, at least make some sense. What's zero crack? Having a child? Or not being able to kill it? But that intention got complicated uh, when an American um, anti-choice crew turned up wearing body cameras uh, with a BuzzFeed uh, camera crew following them around. And people thought it was worth engaging with the Americans because the fact was fields were doing an article on them. You can see both the uh, anti-choice men here are wearing body cameras. Yeah, we basically just want to talk to you guys about why you are for appeal and why you're going to vote yes. But these Americans were well trained, they didn't get involved in any aggro, they actually kept a reasonable body distance from people and they were being fairly polite as you can see here. So this discussion goes on for a while. The problem is it started to attract other people from across the road to come and join in as well. And as it was to turn out this new lot weren't good at staying polite and liked to close that body distance and get right into people's faces. The biology textbooks all say the same thing. A human life begins at the moment the sperm and egg come together, and that the only difference. This guy's not too bad, but the next guy is determined to get right up to people and deliver a lecture, even when it's pretty clear that they don't want to. So, prearranged thing was somebody else in the demonstration steps in the way, so he's forced to move back a bit. And as you can see, he's getting a bit irritated by this. The man turns his back because he doesn't want any aggro with them. He goes around. And what I hadn't realized was he'd spotted the camera, so let's watch this again. So there he is, taking a look at the camera, and now he's going to move around and come right on up to my blind side and suddenly be in my face right beside me. Who are you for? Who are you? So why are you? Why are you? No, who are you? Don't photograph me, mate. Why not? Who are you? What have you got to hide? You don't photograph me. What are you trying to hide? Are you threatening me? I am threatening you. You are threatening me. You you oh, photographed that, yeah. Uh, that's and a video, that by the way. <laughs> and realizing he's on camera, off he runs. Uh, now you've kind of got to wonder what the hell is going on here. Why that easy turn to aggression? Why presume it's okay to smack the camera, and then why run off as soon as you realize those actions have been cut, uh, caught? Uh, why are you? Why are you? No, who are you? Don't. Uh, me, mate. I mean, it wouldn't be an excuse in any case, but let's remember this guy crossed the road to engage in an argument with a load of people who were obviously on the other side of things from him and who were surrounded by cameras. So why this complete freak out when he gets on video himself? To be clear, if he was picking on somebody a lot younger than him, that sort of uh, aggression might well have intimidated them out of uh, continuing to record the scene. And um, I think what we're seeing here is kind of like the arrogance and, and the sort of um, being used to throwing your weight around uh, from the no side. I mean, a lot of these people are very establishment figures. They're used to having people obeying their orders and they get pretty outraged and aggressive indeed, um, as happens here, when that doesn't happen. So, we don't want to make too much of this incident. Uh, okay, he was trying to intimidate me, but I wasn't particularly stressed by that. He hit the camera, but no damage was done, and then he legged it as soon as he realized he was being recorded. All I would say is it's worth contrasting that with a quite ridiculous 
hype uh, put into Laddergate uh, in Galway when two men who should have known better got into an argument about putting a poster up at a pole. Uh, one of them pushed the ladder at the other, the other pushed back and the first guy fell over. Uh, the No campaign actually turned that incident into a video that they were then advertising via Facebook at everybody over 18 in Ireland. I feel what's going on here is that because they've made no progress whatsoever in the polls, and it's pretty clear people are intending to vote yes, that the No campaign has got increasingly desperate and aggressive, and is also going out there looking for some sort of gotcha moment that they can use. I think probably in the last week of the campaign, we're going to see quite a lot of kind of weird videos that they've been shooting during the course of the campaign. I think this sort of provocation is probably going to increase and we have to be careful when it happens to take it calmly and not to respond in kind. Uh, particularly with the ICBO and the body cameras, it's quite clear the intention of that exercise is to try and capture people being justifiably angry with them and then to use that out of context in shock ads. I'd have to say the thing I'd take from this experience as well is that the referendum is also asking us the question, which sort of Ireland do you want to live in in the future? Do we want the Ireland of the past the Magdalen laundries, the industrial schools, the mother and baby homes like Tune, Or do we want to go forward into an Ireland that has a much brighter future and where the healthcare of women in particular is something that society treats as a priority? That's the question I think we need to be asking ourselves on May 25th. And I know for certain I'm going to be voting yes.